Whether you like it or not, Fortnite is one of the most popular games right now, and so we decided we would put together a machine for a relatively low budget, $700, $750, depending on the sales of the day, and see if we could make something both capable of streaming and playing Fortnite simultaneously. So to add some value to our benchmarks, we've got some additional testing on stream throughput. So we're looking at viewer side performance, what's the experience the viewer gets, and then streamer side performance, what is their frame rate as they are playing and streaming simultaneously. And this is our machine we threw together for it using some of the current Black Friday or Cyber Monday sales, and most of those should be ongoing. We'll link the parts below if you wanna follow along with this build. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Just Buy It code. Unlike real-time ray tracing, our merch actually exists. To commemorate the most memorable quote of the year, and also Black Friday, but mostly the first thing, everything in the GN store is 10% off with the discount code Just Buy It at checkout. That includes our most popular item, the critically acclaimed GN Mod Mat, our shirts, ceramic coffee mugs, and GPU component posters, and everything else. As a bonus, this is also a great way to support GN's work. The code lasts through November 26th. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below. So the problem with PC builds is everybody always posts their list that they know is absolutely superior. And it's something that happens a lot because everyone in the audience, for the most part, has built a computer. And so you get this general feeling of superiority because you can put together a system of similar spec for cheaper. But the point here today is that we had all of these parts We've validated them all, we've worked with them all, and we trust them to be not garbage. So the build then comes out with a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte SC card, which is about the cheapest 1060 you can get. Yeah, that's the name of it, 1060. Too much 20 series lately. It is a 1060. It's not a 2060. It's a 1060 6 gigabyte card. So it's about 200 bucks after the rebate, sometimes a little cheaper, sometimes a little more, kind of fluctuates. And then the CPU is an R5 2600, which we awarded our best overall value award for this year out of all the CPUs. 160 bucks makes it a very good buy. And at six cores and 12 threads, it's actually a pretty capable CPU for lower quality streaming. Not low quality, but lower. You can stream with H.264 very fast, which is acceptable. Very fast is the name of the encoding preset. It's fine. It's a good one for someone who's really just starting out, not really making any money on streaming, just kind of interested in it. And then you've got options, of course, with AM4 to go with Ryzen 7 instead if you did want that extra headroom for streaming. But we would recommend a better motherboard for that than what we've chosen. We've chosen a Gigabyte Aorus Pro motherboard, technically Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, that's what we had. It's about 100 bucks right now. Uh, speaking with Buildzoid, we've decided that this board has a good enough VRM for six core to be usable in this configuration. Now it's a bit limited. You can't really overclock too much with this board. It's $100, what do you expect? But it does a good enough job. You can set an all core frequency a bit higher than stock. And then depending on how the voltage and the CPU bin work out, it might go a bit higher on some CPUs than others. So for what you get, it's a pretty good board. The VRM is fine. It's not exciting, it's not bad, it's just okay. Uh, if you wanted to upgrade a bit, we have an AM4 video coming out by Buildzoid with narration of the best boards and different price brackets, if you're curious. For memory, we have two sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX, 3000 megahertz. It's two by four gigabytes, so eight total. CL15, which is pretty good times, actually. And the board and the memory work well together, so that's important. You don't want to play with tertiary, secondary timings all day. Uh, these work fine. It has an XMP profile built in pre pre-tuned for you. And then the power supply is an EVGA 450 watt power supply, which actually works out really well, because as you'll see in our testing, total system power consumption is about 200, 230 watts, depending on what you're doing. So let's go through the parts choices in more depth, some of our benchmarks, and then we'll talk conclusions about what to make of all of this data on about a $700, $750 PC build. For the CPU, we're using the R5 2600. We recently gave the CPU our annual award for best overall value, which it receives for a new price point of $160 or thereabouts and versatility in gaming, streaming, and some lightweight production applications. Intel does compete with AMD, and fiercely so, but simply not at this price point this generation. If you wanted a last-gen product, the R7 1700X can be had for around $170 to $180, although we'd recommend a better motherboard with a stronger VRM to support those extra two cores. It will matter on those CPUs. Fortnite could be played on a cheaper CPU, but the idea here is that you get a mid-range PC capable of a few other things in addition to just Fortnite. For example, lower quality streaming, still viewable enough and decent for a starter, 
is possible on the R5 2600 with some tuning, as is it gaming while streaming on the same system. For Fortnite performance without any active streaming, we found the R5 2600 stock CPU and GTX 1066GB GPU combination to output a frame rate averaging 126 FPS when set to 1080p high. This ties our 1440p high results with the same components and indicates that we're starting to bottleneck on the CPU. At 1080p epic, we could sustain 88 FPS average, which is completely playable. It's just bound to 1080p at this point. At 1440p and epic, we're just below 60 FPS. A mix of high and epic settings could be used to sustain in the 60s and 70s for frame rate if desired, although the game is more about fluid frame throughput than it is about graphics quality, to be honest. With an active stream, we found that faster H.264 encoding settings at 10 megabits per second were just too abusive, leading to our YouTube stream output suffering, as you can see on the screen. We're dropping frames here. The viewer side experience resulted in those dropped frames, which is a poor experience for the viewer and means you're never going to get any traction as a streamer. Streamer side experience and playback is perfectly acceptable, but it's more important to have consistently good viewer side playback with minimal dropped frames. Reducing our quality settings to 1080p and high for the game, setting a 120fps cap for the game, which is about the max anyway, and configuring OBS to encode with the still acceptable very fast H.264 preset, we found that we had a decent stream going that was perfectly viewable by the viewer on the other end of YouTube. We used Twitch style settings here. The very fast encoding preset and 6 megabit per second bitrate yielded a 100% encode frame throughput on the CPU. We did end up dropping some frames, about 10% of them, from rendering stalls. Unfortunately, this leads to an average FPS of 54 instead of 60 for the viewer, but that can still be resolved with a mild overclock or some more settings tweaking. This is completely acceptable as a streaming machine for Fortnite if using these settings, and we'd strongly encourage overclocking the CPU to 3.9 GHz or higher, as that'll resolve any dropped frames at higher settings, while a mild GPU overclock would resolve those rendering stalls. None of this is difficult to do, and we have plenty of guides on how to do it. If you do want to overclock the CPU, we'd encourage getting an aftermarket cooler. The stock cooler is perfectly fine for stock settings. It works well enough, especially in the H500 case, which is decent overall for cooling stock. It's just that once you start overclocking and pushing more volts, you will need some additional cooling power. We have a few cooler alternatives linked in the article below and in the description below if you'd like to check one of those out while you're buying the rest of the parts for this PC, just to give you some overclocking headroom thermally. The GPU is next. The EVGA SC GTX 1066GB was selected for the GPU, as it's available between $200 and $220, depending on the sales that are live when you check this video. List price is closer to $240 or $250, but it's regularly marked down right now and is a pretty good deal. You can check, again, the links below to find the most up-to-date price. To go through the same benchmarks, or a couple of additional benchmarks, actually, here's how the GTX 1060 and R5 2600 combination perform in our standard CPU review test suite. At 1080p and high settings, our system runs F1 2018 at 120fps average, with 1% lows at 59fps across multiple passes. 0.1% lows always drag in this specific game, but it's not dismal. It's just what it normally does. This isn't bad for an R5 2600 and GTX 1060 6GB combination, with both devices fully stock. No overclocking here. Far Cry 5 at normal settings and 1080p operates at 82fps average, with lows tightly behind at 62fps and 55fps. This 1% low frame rate performance, or frame time performance, is indicative of an overall consistent frame delivery time, and we don't see any stutters during gameplay. That's really what we're going for here, especially for a mid-range build. GTA 5 under very high and ultra settings, effectively max, except we're using FXAA and no advanced graphics options, runs at 98 FPS average and 63 FPS for the 1% lows. This is strong performance for GTA 5, putting us just near 100 FPS, average that is, and perfectly acceptable for our build. Finally, Total War Warhammer is a CPU intensive title, and under high settings, it's, again, pretty abusive on the CPU, but we still manage over 100 FPS in this RTS and Grand Strategy game, which is completely acceptable once again. 1440p is also fairly playable if you wanted to capitalize on the recent price reductions in 1440p monitors, and we'll link one of those below as well. We're at 80 FPS average for the F1 2018, 55 FPS average for Far Cry 5 with normal settings, and 72 FPS average for GTA 5 under nearly maxed settings. This is completely playable at 1440p and 1080p alike, although 1080p allows for more headroom 
for graphic setting increases. And we showed Fortnite earlier. That one does struggle a bit. At epic settings, you'd want to go down to high for 1440p with Fortnite. Memory has finally come down a bit in price and is fortunately unimpacted by the impending tariff hike on January 1st. For memory, we chose the $75 kit of Corsair 3000 MHz LPX Vengeance RAM, CL15, and elected to just run it at XMP. The CL15 timings are good overall and don't require any manual tweaking on the Gigabyte Pro motherboard that we're using. You can find other 3000 MHz kits for around $70 or even a bit cheaper, but we previously validated that this kit works well with the Gigabyte B450 AORUS Pro, and that's what we're using. So we chose to stick with what we know works because we know it works, and why fight with memory if you don't have to? It's an extra five to $10 over some team memory, for example, but that's not going to break the bank, and it works, again. So it's easy to put in and just use. You'll want to avoid the 2400 megahertz kits that may tempt you at $60, because the speed difference is actually tangible in many use cases with Ryzen, and we've previously demonstrated that in our Ryzen 2000 series release content, if you're curious to see why and how much it can affect performance. We gave NZXT an award for its H500 this year, which manages to perform surprisingly well with its completely negative pressure configuration. NZXT's H500 has the biggest contributions in quality of life and ease of installation features, which make it trivial to work with and easy to make a good looking system in a relatively small ATX tower case. Kill management has predefined paths laid out, making it easy for a new builder to make sure the backside of the system is also tidy, and the pre-installed fans are actually pretty good. Dust filters are also pre-installed where they'd make sense for a negative pressure system, so just make sure you maintain them and it should be good to go. At roughly $70, this one is a good buy for a mid-range gaming PC like what we're building today. If you wanted to spend less though and allocate some money elsewhere, although it's getting old and stale, the Corsair 270R is still a good deal. It's just Again, it's a bit old, but it's a case, so they don't really change that much over the years. It's about $40 with rebates these days, and we've been recommending it going on three years now in November content, actually. Almost, almost like an annual trend at this point. It's one of the better ones at the price. We do prefer the H500, but that price difference may matter for some of you, and if it does, the 270R is a good alternative. Cooling is acceptable in this one and can be easily expanded on, and that's also true for the 270R. For the power supply, we'll use the EVGA 450 watt BT80 Plus Bronze PSU. This is non-modular, but its power rating is perfect for our system. If you're concerned that 450 watts doesn't sound like enough, we ran some total system power consumption tests and found the following. Under a heavy workload for this system of Fortnite with live encoding via OBS, we measured power consumption at an average peak of 230 watts, with non-streamed Fortnite gameplay at 200 watts. Blender on the CPU only ran 140 watts, and GTA 5 ran 200 watts, with Total War at 205 watts. A 450 watt power supply then is just about perfect, as it puts us right at the peak efficiency point in the efficiency curve. This one is currently about $40 after discounts, making it good for our lower tier to mid-range system. If you wanted to step it up to something a bit higher quality, the Supernova, also an EVGA power supply at 750 watts and modeled G1 Plus, is currently on sale for $60. It's about 20 more, but that discount ends in a few days, so keep that in mind. It's an 80 plus gold unit, it is better, but it's also completely overkill, just for the record, for the system. And for the motherboard, we chose the Gigabyte B450 Pro Wi-Fi. This choice was entirely dictated by what we had available and what we've tested. As you'll see in our upcoming Best AM4 Roundup by Buildzoid, we'd actually prefer something similar to the B450 Tomahawk for an affordable low-end board with an 8-core CPU. But the B450 Pro saves us some money, and its VRM is still completely sufficient for a 6-core CPU, and that's also with Buildzoid's validation on that fact. If you do jump on one of the R7s instead of the R5, we would recommend upgrading the motherboard for something with a stronger VRM to better handle the thermal requirements of an 8-core, especially with overclocking. The B450 Pro is about $100 right now, making it a good financial fit for the build and plenty capable for what we're working with. Okay then, so now that we've tested it, things we would improve or consider improving. If you're building something like this, the R5 2600 is still a great deal. It does become a bit limited and it will become more limited in games that are more CPU intensive. So things you can do. You can either upgrade to an R7 if you are genuinely trying to stream, because this build, remember, it's possible to play Fortnite for way cheaper. You don't need to go this, you, you barely need really much of anything to play Fortnite at reasonable settings. 
So you can go way cheaper than this, but that's not the point. The point is that this can also stream the game while playing it. So there's some versatility there you get. It's a mid-range build, depending on your definition of that. And as a mid-range build, it also has capabilities to do things like lightweight production tasks. Maybe you want to cut some clips together of playing the game with, with your friends. This is completely capable of doing that without slowing things down. You've got CUDA acceleration for Premiere. You have a decent CPU. So it's a good all-arounder. But R7 will be a decent consideration. If you did that, you would want to go with a better motherboard. Check our best AM4 motherboards video for suggestions on those. You could further tune the software side of things to get stuff working a bit better if you want the stream to be improved quality. So options would be overclocking the GPU. It's trivial. You can do it in a couple minutes and stress test it over an hour or two. Uh, dial the settings. You'll be good to go. That would help with some of those dropped renders, uh, some of the, the render stalls that we saw in our stream viewer side testing where we were at 92% delivery instead of 100. So that would help there. Uh, CPU, it's worth considering a bit of an overclock. You can't get a ton out of this motherboard, but you can get a little bit. So 3.9, 4.0 gigahertz should be achievable on most CPUs. And then if you run into some thermal issues there, which is definitely possible, depending on the volt frequency table, uh, you might end up wanting to upgrade the cooler. You can get a better cooler for about, let's call it $30 for a pretty good one, maybe $25, depending. Uh, something like the Thermaltake Contact 12, Contact Silent 12, which is effectively a Hyper 212, also a decent option, although we don't really like it these days because its age is showing a lot. But those are both better than this for the most part. So uh, options there if you did want to do some overclocking and you run into thermal issues depending on your voltage. Uh, motherboard's a limiter as well, but you know, for what you get, it's really not a bad system. It's just not something that you can do a whole lot of tuning with. Now, in the OS, you can do a lot. You could do, uh, you could do a process lasso. You could do process prioritization for OBS. You could artificially limit the frame rate. This is a big one for Fortnite. So if you're OK with going down to 60 FPS in your game, maybe you're only outputting 60 anyway, so to some extent, who cares, uh, and you're not ultra competitive, if you can limit to 60 and you don't feel terrible about it, or you can use external software and limit to something like 80 or 100, that would be pretty reasonable. That gives your CPU some additional processing headroom to handle the stream. And that would be a good setup. So you can definitely get pretty far with this in a startup streaming career uh, with just some manual tweaking in the OS, and it'll teach you a bit too. And it's perfectly capable. It's not the absolute best streaming setup to use because something like an R7, i7, i9 would be easier out of the box to work with, but this is fully capable. Uh, and the i7s, I should mention, if they're just 8 core, 8 thread, like the 9700K, will also limit you in some ways. So keep that in mind too. So overall, the build's fine. You can pick up an SSD, you probably should, and a mechanical drive for archival storage, maybe about one or two terabytes, something like that. For relatively cheap right now, SSD prices are, are through the floor at the moment and will continue to go down, so don't feel a mad rush to buy one because They'll keep going down into 2019, especially quarter one. Uh, yeah, overall, we're pretty happy with the build, with its performance and with its price. You can get stuff that's a bit cheaper, depending on when you check the prices and what your priorities are. But ours were a motherboard we knew wasn't complete garbage. Uh, it's got a good enough VRM for some basic overclocks. We wanted a video card that had CUDA acceleration for any sort of Premiere tasks, or if you did want to push some streaming, lightweight streaming workload off to NV Encoder, for example. And you get both of those with this, plus the memory is a good spec for frequency and timings, and it's all pre-configured in the board. So you don't have to do any work there. And that's it for this one. So uh, feel free to leave your need for validation below if you'd like to say how much better you are than us at doing anything relating to PCs. That's what people always do with these types of content pieces. I've seen you do it to Paul. And uh, I will continue to do what I want. So thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Top that directly. Or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats like this one or one of our shirts like this one. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>